sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist DT from Weather Risk, your commander of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather. And our topics here that this uh, week, uh, this Wednesday night, will be, of course, the mild Christmas weekend, why we're having it, what it means, uh, why did it occur, you know, besides just the El Nino. Um, and then we'll talk about the rainy event for December 27th, 28th in the eastern U.S. And then um, the pattern after Christmas, how it's going to change. And then the, I, the, the topic known as cross-polar flow. I talked about this on the Twitter page and on the Facebook page. A lot of people said, I don't understand what the lines mean. What is cross-polar flow? Why is it important? And so on and so forth. So let's get into it. First, of course, here is the website as always. And of course, you can always find uh, a different forecast products for either if you're in snow removal or construction vineyards, if you trade grain or energies, what have you. Under the shop tab here in the upper right corner, this here is the snowstorm page, as you can see, as always. And then uh, this is the Feds page. And then, of course, this is the grain weather page, which is just for overseas and U.S. grain weather. All right, so here's the latest data from El Nino. And what I wanted to point out here is that in the upper left corner, let me call up the marker here so you can see it. This is region 3.4. This is the 15-day mean from uh, Alex Borman Cyclonic Weather, a great tropical website, by the way. And you can see that um, since it is going up steadily here starting in November, you know, we, we had a little uh, lull right here. Then it shot up a little bit to around 1.75. Then it dropped down. And then around November 20th, it shot all the way up to 2 degrees centigrade right here which is the exact threshold between strong and super El Nino. But if you notice over the past 10 days or so, it started drifting down a little bit. And the latest values are around 1.9, 1.95 on today's value. It's right around here. So it looks like the El Nino in region 3.4 has peaked. This is also the case. This is region 4. It's also, you can notice the drop here as well. So it looks like it has peaked. And that is pretty much as anticipated. A lot of the models, especially the CFS and stuff, they had it leveling off in December and beginning to drop as we approach January, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Okay, let's take a look at the overall pattern here. Now, this is as of December 20th. This is your European ensemble, and I could have used the operational European, but it has a lot of wind barbs on it, so I thought this would be easier for everyone to understand. So this is from the North Pole, okay? Here's the U.S. You can see the USA here. Over here is Europe and Scandinavia. This is Japan and China over here, okay? Now, you see the area in black? This is the polar vortex, okay, at, at this level of the atmosphere. And um, uh, notice here, this, what the, in the purple area, with the, highlighted in the black, you see how it's shaped like this, this elliptical shape? Now, this is the kiss of death for cold weather and cold temperatures in North America because all the cold air is wrapped up in this. This is very strong and very deep, okay? This is a strong polar vortex, and it's in Alaska. Okay, so um, the teleconnections, in other words, the atmosphere's natural response when you have a vortex here in Alaska is to build a ridge here in the middle portion of the country. So the, tr the upper low, the trough in Alaska, means the atmosphere will respond by building a ridge here. That's exactly what we're seeing, a ridge right in this area. And also the cold air is on the north, is, is the, it's not in Greenland or northern Canada. It's up the North Pole down to Alaska. So there's no way for the in this pattern for the cold air to get into the USA. Look at the winds. Look at the lines. Just follow the lines here. Just the wind pattern. It's here, like this. See how tight the lines are? See how tight these are, compacted? That indicates very, very strong winds. That's your Howling Pacific jet. And when it arrives on the west coast of North America, look what it does. It goes straight across the U.S.-Canada, north of the U.S.-Canada border. See that? It goes straight across. There's no way any cold air can come south. The flow is going straight like this. You see how it's doing? Straight across. There's no way for the cold air in the North Pole, the Arctic regions, to come southward. Not in this pattern. And that's what happens when you have the polar vortex in Alaska, and it's very deep and it's very strong like it is now, and it's very large. All right. Let's take a look at our teleconnections. So on the Pacific side, we have our negative EPO here, which is the Alaskan ridge or trough. We have the PNA, which is the West Coast ridge or trough. Then we have our AO, which is the, the Arctic Oscillation, can be positive or negative. And then you have the NAO in Greenland, which can be positive or negative. 
and there are different combinations on the Pacific side. Neutral, positive, negative, positive, neutral, negative, same sort of combinations. You can see nine different combinations in each type. So let's take a look at it. Here's the Pacific side, all right? So the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, the black line shows you where it's been. So you can see it's negative right now, December 17th. Now it's approaching neutral. There's the neutral line right here. See this black line across? That's neutral. And now it's going positive see, into Christmas. So if you like cold and snow, you want the EPO in the eastern U.S., you want the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, to be negative. That's what you want if you like that. Now, if you like mild weather, then you love this. Okay, so when the EPO here is positive, what it does is it means um, there's no cross polar flow. The severely Arctic air in the Arctic regions or Siberia is not coming into North America. Now, when it starts going negative and drops towards the negative valleys in early January, then you're getting more cross polar flow so Canada can turn colder. And if Canada is colder, the USA can become colder. Okay. On the west coast, we have the PNA. Okay, there's the black dots where it is right now. We're neutral. Now look what it does. It goes positive. Now that means somewhat colder temperatures, beginning ridge here. But, uh, again, and, and it says that way into, into early January. But it's not, a, there's no connection to the Arctic. It's just a cold ridge in Canada. And right now, Canada doesn't have a lot of cold air in it. So air coming out of western Canada, it's cooler than the air in, say, Texas or Florida or Alabama, but it's not really cold air. Not right now. So it's what we call seasonal cold. And, and to be fair, central and northern Canada can be quite cold, but there's no Arctic cross flow coming over from Siberia right now because of this pattern. This is, again, you're not getting the severely cold air into northern Canada. On the Atlantic side, well, here's our Arctic Oscillation. Right now, as you can see, it's positive. See the black dots? Now, here's December 21. Look what happens. December 25, it goes towards neutral. And here's the NEO. Positive right now, which means there's a big low in Greenland, and then it goes towards neutral by Christmas. and stays that way until the first week of January. And that's a better sign for the eastern U.S. You want these things at least to be neutral or negative. Okay. Let's talk about Christmas fur pattern first. So this is the uh, map here for Wednesday night, December, uh, 7 o'clock, 0Z the 21st, which is 7 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern time. So there's your upper low in California bringing a big rainstorm to the California. And here's our mean jet. Just do a black line here. You see how the flow is going like this? Again, all this cold air is blocked in Canada. So it can't get there. Not when the flow is doing this. And this is your southern jet, right like this. And again, you notice how I mentioned before, how this is really bad when you have a vortex in Alaska, you have a ridge in the middle part of the country. There's your vortex in Alaska. Where's the ridge? Right in the Midwest. Like clockwork, boys and girls. Like clockwork. Okay. So this is now here for Christmas Day. Here's the upper low in Texas, Oklahoma. And there's your flow. There's your vortex again in Alaska, your polar vortex. And there's your flow. There's your ridge. Again, Alaska Ridge, big ridge, Alaska Vortex, big ridge in the upper plains of the Great Lakes. See that? There you go. It's just, it's just like clockwork. It always, it always works out that way. And there's your upper low in, in Texas and Oklahoma, and there's a trough here. That's, that's going to be your rainstorm here. So this map on the lower right, this is the surface map. There's your low. You've got snow here in western Kansas, Colorado, and Nebraska. But everything else, rain, 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 Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Missouri, Missouri, Arkansas. The high, which is pretty nice for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day on the East Coast, getting south winds, pulling up moisture and warm air into the Delta, the Ohio Valley, and eventually into the East Coast. Now, this is uh, late Christmas night into the 26th, and it's rain on the East Coast and mid-Atlantic. Now, there is a cold high to the north. If this was a regular winter pattern, this would be an ice storm, potentially overrunning ice storm. But this is mild Pacific air. It's not nearly cold enough. It's even raining on Christmas Day, the day after Christmas, in Minnesota and Wisconsin in late December. Not a drop of snow or ice. Quite remarkable. Okay. Let's move on. This is December 28th. So eventually what's going to happen is, let me go back to this here. So this 
upper low here is going to come eastward. And as it does so, we're going to get this. Now the trough opens up here. We're getting now this ridge is beginning to amplify. Okay? So the ridge was here and here. We're not getting amplification yet. But suddenly, okay, over December 27th to 28th, this ridge begins to amplify and build into Western Canada. Now the black line here shows you the problem though. This is better, you're getting more cold air coming into eastern Canada. But the flow, look at the black line. This is still Pacific air coming in. You're not getting any air coming in from the Arctic region. This is Pacific air that drops down here. And it's somewhat cold, but again, it's not very cold. There's a high here, you get some cold flow coming down. The low moves off the coast, okay? It's all rain, it might end up snow in the mountains, maybe on the 28th or 29th, maybe. You got north winds, it's nice. You got strong winds here on the east coast, 20, 30 mile an hour gusts, and it gets cold. Okay, so after this low passes through it, off the coast, it gets flow, you get cold down. Okay. So um, I present the, print this map again so you can see what's going on here. So we can see the ridge amplifying, and there is the, the problem. So that's where we are, and we can see the change going, beginning to take place right here, beginning to take place right here. Now, let's talk about this in more detail. The map on the upper left, this is, uh, let me change maps here. I've got the wrong view of the map. Let's do it this way. So this is the upper left map. So this is what we just looked at here. I'm going to blow this all up and give you a hemispheric shot of what this looks like. Thing is front so you can see it. Okay. So there's your polar vortex, as you can see. And call it my nice marker, as you can see it. There we go. Okay, so there's your polar vortex here, and there's your upper low. Okay, and we talked about this vortex here, and there's your ridge. So this is all mild air. There's no way you're getting cold in air southward. But look what happens on December 29th. So the vortex is beginning to split here, folks. Okay. The, you get the ridge is beginning to expand, and you're getting the, the vortex beginning to split into two pieces. But you're still getting Pacific air, kind of. You're getting some, a little bit of Arctic air here because you're almost in the Arctic region, so you're getting some cold air. But this is, you're not getting any direct Arctic air plunging into the eastern United States. This is still moderate uh, Pacific air mass coming in from the North Pacific. This is not, you know, we, an Arctic air mass. Okay? So, but they, that is the beginning of the change. That's December 29th. Now, um, the upper left here, we have uh, December 31, and this is the European. So what's happened here is that uh, as the vortex continues to split, um, the ridge gets a chance to build. So when the vortex begins to split here, this ridge can now go in the gap here. Okay, That's what's going to happen. Sure enough, as we go towards this map, we can clearly see that happening. Uh, on December 31, the ridge begins to look how much more sharp it is. Compare that ridge to that. That ridge to that. See the difference? It really expands upwards. Now you're getting flow coming from Alaska. Look at the lines coming down from the North Pole from the Arctic regions. And you can see the flow going straight down into the Midwest and the Great Lakes in the Northeast. There's a trough offshore here. So this is a pretty cold pattern. Meanwhile, you're still getting El Nino energy sending low pressure into California. Okay, so we shrink that map here and look at the next one. This is July. This is, excuse me, July. This is uh, January 2nd. And here, we can see that the ridge has, the green line has built all the way into the Arctic region. And it has split the polar vortex at Texas into two pieces. See that? And you're getting a direct flow from the North Pole and Siberia. Now look at the black line, straight down into Michigan and Pennsylvania, and New York and New England and the Great Lakes. See that? The ridge, the green line goes up, and the flow comes down. Quite remarkable. Bring, oh, here we go. So the flow goes up, the vortex is split, so this ridge can expand, and the Arctic air comes southward. And uh, you can even see it more. This is the GFS ensemble for January 4 or 5. And look at the green line. You can clearly see the vortex has split into two pieces. Right? 
So we were this December 23rd, and then in two weeks from now, we're this. This is a profound pattern change. Now, uh, we also have a piece of energy in the southern jet stream on January 4 5. Okay, so if this map is right, this piece of energy could produce the first significant winter storm threat in the eastern U.S. sometime January 4 or 5. If this is right, we don't know if it's right, but the point is the vortex splits, the ridge builds up, and you can see the lines are now coming straight out of the North Pole. They weren't doing that before. These lines are not, these lines here are not coming out of the North Pole. They're coming straight out of the Pacific. Okay, if you can't see the difference here, I can't explain it any better. But that's what the issue is. You're getting your lines coming out of the North Pole, which is a cross-polar flow. This is directly from Siberia across the North Pole into central and southern Canada. Okay, one last little piece of, a couple of last pieces of information here. This is the 18Z GFS. You can see this afternoon, 18Z. This is crap. This is complete bullshit. And how do I know it's bullshit? Because of this. It's the same time frame. Wait a second. Yeah, January 4th. See the date, January 4th, okay? Huge ridge on the East Coast, no, no cross-polar flow, Pacific energy, no ridge in Western Canada, complete crap. That's what the ensemble shows. So this is correct. This is correct. This is bullshit. Correct? Bullshit. And as we look at January 4th, nice ridge here, um, and you can see that strong piece of energy in the southern jet stream. This has all sorts of promise here. All sorts of promise down the road. And there's more energy coming in from California on the Nino. Finally, this here is the MJO. Uh, again, for the next uh, three or four weeks, you can see uh, the next two weeks here anyway, that the uh, European the GFS, they moved into phase eight and phase one. And we've talked about that before for December, January. That's quite a cold pattern. So that would be good to see if that actually happens. Anyway, that's the video. I didn't want to go any deeper than this because, you know, it's almost a holiday time, but I wanted to give an update for everybody so you can understand what I mean by cross-polar flow and how to get the cold air coming south and how things are going to rapidly change as we approach the end of the month and into uh, January. So there you go. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you over on the Twitter page and over on the website and over on the Facebook page.